Okay then, so having finished Almerich by Robert E. Howard, which was, oh, we'll talk about that in greater detail, time to pick a new random book. You know how we do it, right? We need, what do we need? We need a 10-sided die. Voila. We need a 6-sided die. There's one. And we need a 20-sided die. Easy enough to grab from there. All right. First, we roll the 10-sided die to see which stack we draw from. What do we get there? Nine. Well, that's good. That makes it easier, right? Because those are the outside rows, 5 through 10. Are we going to count up from the bottom, which would be 3 through 6, or down from the top, 1 through 3? I'm sorry, 4 through 6. You know what I mean. 4. We're going to go up from the bottom. And the 20-sided die gives us a 8. So what we're looking for now is the 8th book from the bottom of the ninth stack. Let's make that happen. We're going to do it. We're going to pick the random book. So we know that there's 10 stacks, right? This is number 10. This must be number 9. And we're going, what was it? 8 from the bottom? Oh, I'm going to have to bend and twist, but I'm going to make it happen. Here's one. Uh oh, can I even see it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, can I get it out? It's so tight. We packed. It's so heavy on top. Oh, this is, oh, I know what this is already. What? Stanley presents Spider-Woman. <laughs> Why not, man? Dig that. Terrible condition, kind of. Don't care. Reprints in color of the old Spider-Woman comic books. Randomly chosen for your reading pleasure. It's just that easy. Okay, just another quick reconfiguration of things, and we're just going to blaze ahead in the giant anthology video we talked about these kind of magazines in book form destinies jim bain the planet buyer by cord wainer smith i lost my angle there just weird a new science fiction experience we can only imagine so it's actually it's semi-warm and and springy here so i have the window open so you might hear an airplane or other weird stuff from outside, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to keep going because what are we doing here? It's Lester Del Rey, Attack from Atlantis. Underwater sci-fi. Yeah. How many books have been named Firebird? Look at this guy. Look at this cover. Dynamite. Charles L. Harness. I don't know. I don't know, man. You can judge me or you can judge whatever, but I don't care. Epic, a superb anthology edited by Roger L. Wood and Robert Silverberg. Not much to look at, but, you know, I remember this one kind of great. Another great lineup of, of authors. And look at how densely packed this is. That is a lot of sci-fi right there, people. A lot of sci-fi for your money. Um, yeah, I remember this one, Rogue Roman. This was in one of the book haul videos. Hands like all red and pink and weird looking. How are you doing? <laughs> is that, is that, if you're a doctor, is this normal? Do I need to get more blood flow? Anyway, Lance Horner, if you say so. That was in a, ouch, I hurt my elbow. That was in a one of the big uh, book haul videos, if I remember correctly. Regicide by Nicholas Royal. Look at how spooky that is. Obviously a newer book, too. This is newer-ish or whatever-ish. What does new mean when you're my age? 2011. I mean, as opposed to, like, 1955 or whatever or some of these. So, you know... Love Anne McCaffrey, love the Dragon Rider stuff, the Pern stuff, Anne McCaffrey, the ship who sang. It's got a rocket ship and a lady. 
Ian Wallace, The Rape of the Sun. There's that title. And then there's this guy. And Spaceman. And there we are, have that. Uh, my buddy Mel Odom. Haven't talked to Mel in ages. I should say hey to Mel. Master Sergeant. Um, this was, I think, the beginning of, yeah, book one of a series of military SF stuff that he did for Harbor Voyager. Mel Odom, just one of my favorite authors in the Forgotten Realms, stable and just a joy to work with ever, just the nicest guy in the world and a fantastic, fantastic storyteller. Go read Everything You Can by Mel Odom. Time and Light by William Bornfield. I was kind of a fan of these uh, White Wolf original horror novels. They did some really interesting uh, design work on here, and they found some really interesting authors, so I kind of bought some, and then they just kind of got in the pile. And now this is like, should I just take pull this out and read it? But if I keep doing that, then it defeats the purpose of the whole thing that we're talking about in Here's Universe 2. We definitely talked about this in the big anthology hall because it had this super cool frozen New York cityscape. The Apocalypse Has Happened. Science, Fantasy, and Adventure. Transit. Edmund Cooper. Manly Men in Action. And it's an easy eye book, too, so I might not have to use my reading glasses. We definitely talked about this in the, one of the big haul videos, Jack Vance Languages of Pow. Another A. Merritt classic, The Face in the Abyss. Terrific cover art there. Old school weird fiction. Lovely wrap cover. Hooray. This one, I didn't steal it. They were purging stuff from the TSR book department library. Um, these were, for a while, TSR owned and ran Amazing Stories, and Marty Greenberg was hired to do some anthology of the old stories. So this is just stories from Amazing Stories magazine from 1926 to 1935, all known apparently as the Wonder Years. Just love sci-fi from that time period and the whole Pulp Fiction universe, so why is that? Why could that be bad? It's not bad. Ooh, you can probably see underneath this, but don't, don't. Don't be disrespectful to Ray Bradbury. R is for Rocket. Maybe not the, like, most beautiful edition of that, but, you know, Ray Bradbury. One of the greatest of all time. And then this one. I've seen this on a bunch of other videos, right? Like the worst covers, the silliest covers, stuff like that. I found this years and years ago. I don't know why I haven't read it yet. For the same reason I haven't read any of the other ones yet. They haven't come up at random. Um, D99 by HB5 with just the grooviest, gosh darn cover. Good Lord. This was one where I saw this. I just kind of pulled it out at random. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yup. Short little thing. Not in good condition, but don't care. D99 by HB Fife. What a spectacular object. These are art objects. Okay? They are. F. Marion Crawford, For the Blood is the Life and Other Stories. Yeah, speaking of those white wolf original horror guys um, very nicely presented why haven't I read this I, I'm going to ask that question of every single one of the 400 books so we gotta get moving the uh, sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser I don't know why this is here I think this was in one of the hall like randomly in one of the halls um, it, it, when it comes up at random I'm going to read that this is one another one that I actually bought on purpose it wasn't sort of a Right, but because it was a mass market and ended up here, Walking the Tree by Karen Warren. Again, another one that is new-ish compared to all the stuff from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, I don't know why I'm looking these up. Just making this video longer. This was uh, 2010. 
but that was the 2011 edition. Another great DAW book, right? Number 128, Stress Patter, Stress Pattern by Neil Barrett Jr., who I've met. What's up? Um, oh, this was definitely in one of those videos that we talked about putting a sticker on a book, Farseer by Robert J. Sawyer. What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, stop doing that. Clifford, Clifford Simak, A Choice of Gods. Love the Clifford Simak. Love me some Clifford. Oh, we talked about this one in the anthology video that with the, oh, Frank Fritz had a cover. And then these are reprints, black and white reprints from old EC Comics. <gasps> Tales of the Incredible. Bet your butt it's, it's incredible. Also from that same video, Five Unearthly Visions. What's that guy doing? What's up? Welcome to Earth. Don't mess stuff up. Heroic Fantasy and lots of it. Look at how thick that is. Very kind. No, you know, faded, but not completely faded to white, but densely packed. <coughs> Pardon me, with Heroic Fantasy. Galactic Cluster by James Blish. How cool is that? Rocket ships are awesome. Rocket ships are cool. In, in case you're wondering, my album with all of these songs will drop next week. The Star Dwellers, also by James Blish, found a, some, a little stash in a used bookstore nearby here that I go to pretty often of some UK editions of James Blish. And I was like, where did these come from? And they're mine now. If this isn't Chris Foss, it's somebody trying to look like Chris Foss. An Analog Book, A War of Shadows by Jack L. Chalker. This one, I'm, I'm sure, was on one of these book haul videos. As for sure was this Ron Goulart masterpiece. <laughs> That's gross. So, The Curse of the Obelisk. This guy's bumming. Getting carried away by a giant bat. It happens. You know, I mean, who? how many of us can say we've never been carried away by a giant bat? Well, you know, big books, big, long books, I don't know, right? But I remember reading a lot of her stuff when I was subscribing to Analog Magazine back in the day, liked it, thought, yeah, right. And then it's just sort of huge. And I'm like, should I read it? Well, it, I am when it comes up at random. The, at random, at random. When it comes up at random over by there, I'm going to grab this in the company out of the others or whatever that is. I'm getting tired. My throat hurts. <coughs> I want some water. Space Platform by Murray Leinster. That's what we were worried about, right? When Sputnik was launched. I don't remember that. I'm not that old. I mean, how old do you think I am? But people were worried about that. They're going to make a space platform. And then somebody said, let's call it a space station. And said, okay, a space station platform. And they're going to shoot nuclear missiles down at us. Happily, they didn't do that. Is this the first novel of all time? Obviously not this exact edition, but it is a groovy double day anchor book of the tale of Genji by the Lady Murasaki. Frederick Pohl. I am a big Frederick Pohl fan. I'm just name dropping all over the place. Met him once. He signed my copy of, of Gateway. We already talked about that. The gold at the at the Starbows and Starbow Starbows. I I just I don't know. I am sorry to the spirit, the ever living spirit of Frederick Pohl, for just saying the, your title in a confused and messed up and silly way. Uh, time Probe, The Sciences and Science Fiction, uh, collected, collected and introduced by Arthur C. Clarke. Didn't we talk about this in one of those videos, right? These are sort of nonfiction articles by these science fiction authors and others. Um, I don't know. Now, I'm really curious about that. I want to read it, and I will at random. Hijack. 
The Mafia Takes to Space. We remind, this was definitely in one of the book haul videos. It's the spaceman with the little hat and the Tommy gun. Oh, God. Delightful. Another by Mr. Van Vogt. The Silky. Look at that. Alien monster thing. And there it is again. Barry in Malsberg. And why not Barry in Malsberg with Galaxies? This is, um, we've seen another, at least a couple of these Masters of Science Fiction editions. Skinny little book, huh? Shouldn't take too long to knock this one out. Galaxies by Barry Malsberg. Those last two in this stack, there's really a lot more to go. I don't know, man. I might have to make this into like five different videos. Look, gold foil. Remember we talked about foiling. Master, Master SF series or SF Master series. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to read that. From the New English Library, The Paradox Men by Charles L. Harness. Brian Aldous always out there doing introductions and stuff, yeah? What's up? I'm just throwing them on the floor. That is so disrespectful. Beyond the Moon. Spacemen and rocket ships. Original title, The Star Kings. What do we think of that? Star King's a better title. Spaceman. Life and Death on Other Worlds. That's super cool. That's a science fiction book. I'm getting tired. There's a lot more to go. I'm going to take a short break and come back and do more. All right, then one more stack to finish the outer layer. This is insane how many of the, how many books there are here. It's starting to come home, you know, be driven home to me as I'm doing this. How many just books I have bought and not yet read. There's always books not to read. Here's Green Mansions. Have a really cool old edition of that. And you might now be wondering, right? Well, Phil, how if you have all of these and they're all stacked here, right? Where you can see the spines or the covers of books like The Valley Where Time Stood Still by Lynn Carter. Cat Lovers Rejoice. Um... How do you know you're not buying the same book over and over again? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have a story about that. And I'll tell you about that while we look at The Girl Factory. All right. um, turns out I did. So I had them all in a box and then something occurred to me like, I'm probably buying the same book. Oops, sorry about that. So buying the same book, you know, like over and over and over again. And then I thought, you know what? All these books books are getting damaged I think in this box and there's got to be a better way and am I buying these over and over again and so I took them all out of the box I stacked them up here and while I did that I went on Goodreads there's Obsession by Ramsey Campbell UK horror author fabulous love Ramsey Campbell um and so I put them all in Goodreads, right? And while doing it on my sort of to-be-read list there, right? The list is want to read on Goodreads. And while I was doing that, I found out that indeed I had bought the same book a couple times or more. And also found that some of the books that I had bought in regular, you know, sort of standalone paperback forms or later editions I already had as an ace double. Or that I already had downstairs in a hardcover or bigger format trade paperback. Oh, Spine, Fading, Honda here. Transit to Scorpio by Alan Burt Akers. Set number 33, Daw, if you're counting. Um, and so I ended up selling some of those on, putting them up on eBay. And when I say eBay, you will find a link to my eBay store in the description with all the other links of all the other stuff that I've talked about linking to. And so I did sort of get these organized. And now that I have that, that Goodreads list, remember these from a previous video, spooky ass little kids. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, I have the Goodreads app on my phone. So when I'm at a used bookstore, I'm like, Oh, what's this? This looks cool. Why do I remember that? And I can check to see if I actually bought it like, you know, 10 years ago. Element 79, Fred Hoyle. 
So anyway, now I don't buy the same book over and over and over again because I'm organized. Edited by Robert Hoskins, Swords Against Tomorrow. Fantasy anthology that was in my feature length. I bought a box of sci-fi and fantasy anthologies on eBay video. A Century of Great Short Science Fiction Novels, edited by Damon Knight, is also on that video. As is After the Fall. Gleefully happy about the Apocalypse uh, anthology, edited by Robert Sheckley. And we talked about this one, where I read the Richard Matheson story. Um, button, button, it was turned into the movie The Box. You remember that from the previous video. The movie was better, was more robust. Transit of Earth collection, anthology of short stories. This is a collection, the best of C.L. Moore. Gorgeous, Del Rey, best of series. We've seen at least a couple of those already, right? At least one. This one has been wrapped up very tightly. You can see it's just like basically gift wrapped in plastic because I had to glue it together because it was broken. So it is now just being held immobile <laughs> for however long it takes for 33 years until I read A Place Beyond Man by Carrie Nieper. And people put stickers on books called Sex Max. Talk about in a previous video. Don't put stickers on books. The Edict was made into a movie by Max Ehrlich. We talked about that in a previous video as well. Hey, look, it's another Jack Williamson book because I bought that box of Jack Williamson books. And there were books by Jack Williamson in it, including People Machines. Nine of SF's best by one of SF's best writers. Ooh. All right. Short story collection by the prolific and long-lived Jack Williamson. The Daughter of Time, Josephine Tay. Know nothing about this. Penguin book. Feels nice. Um, I will read it at random sometime in the next 33 years. I keep saying that and it's terrible. Star-Lord, Louise Lawrence. Remember we talked about this cover being super weird and that this is probably the nine millionth book named Star-Lord? Star Lord, man. Uh, this was also definitely on a previous book haul video. The ones in the back will have predated all those videos. So I'm going to whip through some of these. Uh, you know, uh, the A bombs have fallen. Oh, this one we talked about too at length because they changed the title, and I don't know if the old title was better. I can't remember. Echo X by Ben Barsman. Not the most inspiring cover. The Snake on the Grave by George Beer. This was another one that we saw in a previous video. It's weird. It's groovy. It's got a sea monster and a lady. I'm going to buy it. Barry Huart, Bridge of Birds, a novel of an ancient China that never was. So, you know, in case you're out there thinking, hey, fantasy is always the same you know, European or English medieval thing, right? Uh, it isn't always. It hasn't always been. I definitely, you know, authors like Robert E. Howard and Tolkien, for sure, right, where it's a lot of, you know, the sort of British Isles, Anglo-Saxon and um, Scandinavian folklore, and it's all very like the Northmen are super cool, and it's all very white and European. Not always true. It's not always true. There is a lot of fantasy out there set in and inspired by other cultures. You just have to go out and find it. And, you know, what? if you would like to, write it. How about that? Well, how do you get more sort of Asian-themed fantasy out there? Uh, write it. Anyway, Night of the Big Heat was by John Limington. One of those great classic kind of covers where the art somehow works together with everything. 
And I was being so super cool that I had to hit the tripod just to punctuate it. Um, is this the newest of the books that are in here? Just kept hearing about it. Everybody was talking about it. I don't know. Is it good? Is everybody over it? I mean, it's not new anymore, right? The girl with all the gifts. I, I, so by the time I read this, 33 years from now, it'll be like, yeah, it's old, old fashioned. It's not going to be 33 years. The Sorcerer's Ship by Hannes Bach. Pretty sure this was in a video too. Somebody stap or stapled, taped the spine together. I don't know. There are ways to fix that without having tape on it. So the, my phone stopped recording for some reason, and I did not know. And so I just kept talking and then was horrified to find that I had been cut off and was just sort of looking at books and then kind of putting them in different piles at random and tried to figure out, and I think I did an okay job of what I showed or thought I was showing but didn't show. So anyway, if you're really paying close attention and you see books that have been on twice, it's just me struggling to try to figure out what got cut off. Anyway, I know for sure that this was the last, this was the last book. It was cut off mid uh, look see. The book of Philip Jose Farmer in a otherwise beautiful condition daw book. Look at how brightly yellow, brightly bright yellow that's mine is. Collection of Philip Jose Farmer short stories. And then somebody puts a sticker on it. Don't put stickers on books. Okay? Okay. That's upsetting because this book is beautiful. And also on the last video, I talked about how my parents were big John D. McDonald's fans. Why do I keep calling them McDonald's? Stop doing that. John D. McDonald fans, a bullet for Cinderella, and more sticker damage. This is half price books, by the way, guys. Stop doing that. What's next? 10 months on the New York Times bestseller list. Is this true? The Crystal Cave, her most magical enchanting novel by Mary Stewart. There she is. What's up? Okay. This is a book that I have read, uh, like we saw before Gateway. This one is Orphans of the Sky, the great generation ship story that inspired the role-playing game Metamorphosis Alpha, which then turned into the role-playing game Gamma World. I read this back in the day, probably junior high, and loved it. But I understand that now it kind of doesn't stand up to current social norms, whatever. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't really remember it that well. But I found this beautiful copy in such beautiful, perfect shape. that I was like, well, I'm buying that. I'm going to read it again um, in the due course of random things over the next 33 years. But we're not getting into the whole 33 year thing again. Beyond the Sealed World by Rena Vale. It's another one. Know nothing about it. But it's got the like Moon City... Whatever, and the guy's there in like a rocket ship. I don't know. Daily1444 is an atavist. You know what? I don't know what to say about that. Whisper from the Stars by Jeff Sutton. More just beautiful cover art. Right? Dell. Paperback. He wrenched open the door to strange multiple worlds. Gorgeous. Oh, I'm trying to get that out of there. Sturgeon in Orbit. Stories by Theodore Sturgeon. That's cool, right? Who doesn't like a, a good Theodore Sturgeon collection? I think there's been, this is at least the second one that we've seen so far in this, right? Going out and buying those Theodore Sturgeon books. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, yes, of course, best known as the creator of Sherlock Holmes. This is the Poison Belt, together with the Disintegration Machine and When the World Screamed, Professor, Professor Challenger Stories. Delightful, classic stuff. Hawksbill Station by Robert Silverberg. 
one of his, you know, sort of highly, most highly regarded books, I believe, right? Prisoner's Base, Hawksbill Station. Delighted to have that. I'm a Robert Silverberg fan as much as the next guy. The Wood Beyond the World by William Morris. Did I do the joke about this is before he started the agency? No. Yeah, it's not the same. William Morris. Fun cover. Rap. Right, old school kind of fantasy. Speaking of old school, some in, in here are some classics, or what people uh, tend to believe are classics or consider classics. A Canto Cold for <laughs> Bleh. I'm a talker. I'm I'm a talker that does the talking. A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. In a nice older uh, edition here. I should, probably should have read that one like 40 years ago, but I didn't, so shh. Broke Down Engine, Ron Goulart. I got a lot of Ron Goulart books, man. There's Ron Goulart everywhere through here, and that doesn't even include the, what is it, the Chameleon and Next Chameleon trilogies that I have saved out for a series read. I guess I am a Ron Goulart fan. I read this one in college because, you know, because I was in college, and it's The Doors of Perception by Aldous Huxley, and I kept it for all these years, and I, you know, I don't know, am I going to reread this? I will, when it comes up at random, sometime in the next 33 years. We saw this one, and these have gotten mixed up a lot since uh, uh, I got that big box of stuff. This was in one of the big book haul videos, The Web of the Chosen by Jack L. Chalker. Weird kind of, it's a Wayne, Doug, uh, Wayne Barlow cover and then this is wind dancers that was in one of those videos as well all right mulch mulch maluch maluch we don't know how to pronounce anything at all the pollinators of eden by john boyd how about that one UK, Australia, New Zealand. Well, that's groovy. Pan science fiction. Where do I get these books from the UK? Is it UK? Is it pronounced UK or UK? I don't know. C.M. Kornbluth and Frederick Paul. A great team up, by the way. I mean, these guys wrote some terrific stuff. This is the wonder effect. Ads for other books on the back. And why the bleep not? Some of these are kind of uh, jammed in here a little bit, but I'm pulling them out. I'm doing it. I'm showing you all these. This was in the giant feature-length anthology video. Go back and look at that for Clarion 3. And we talked about I bought a box of books all by Joe. No, not by Joe Haldeman. That was Jack Williamson. Anyway, jo Joe Haldeman wrote The Coming, and here's a copy of it. And I liked... Anne McCaffrey, I, I read in high school the Dragon Riders of Pern and all that stuff, and I've heard good things about the ship who sang. It's got a rocket ship and a lady. Anne McCaffrey. We, if, you were, if you saw the big giant anthology video, you remember that this is the one that was missing pages. What the no? But it's here, and when it comes up, I will read all of the other stories except for the one that is missing those first pages. Oh, just, oh my goodness. What are we going to do with our lives? Another one from the big anthology hall video, The Best from Galaxy, Volume 4. Uh, this is another one that we talked about in that big video about the anthology. Watch the anthology video. This is New Worlds of Fantasy. Number three. And one of my favorite authors of all time, fully favorite authors of all time, James M. Cain. Um, he's famous if you've, if you've seen the movie or movies. One of the various adaptations of The Postman Always Rings Twice. Or, um, oh my God, just they were making James M. Cain movies like crazy, right? Serenade. Just love James M. Cain. The, one of the great masters masters of the sort of hard-boiled uh, detective kind of thing. This, oh, there's a story behind this one. Two, two, solid flesh. 
by Nick O'Donohue. This is a TSR book. This was published before I started working at TSR. And the one of the editors there, uh, the late, great Bill Larson, who was really my editing mentor, um, had said in a meeting that this was his favorite of the, the TSR books. These were original fantasy and science fiction novels um, published by TSR. Short-lived kind of thing. I was there for just the very end of that. Um, and so I kept my copy of this because we always had copies of everything. So I kept this. I've kept it for years and years. Um, I will eventually read it when I get to it at random. Uh-oh. The whole thing was about to collapse. Did you see that? It was about to be a disaster. Just terrible. After that, I would have had to look back to Earth. Don File? He had to destroy the world in order to save it. Well, that's what they all say. You know, somebody tells you, well, listen, I'm going to have to destroy you in order to save you. It's like, no, no, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You're a liar. Veronica, a novel. Is this one of those? No, it's not a Zeva. I don't know anything about this. I think it's a horror novel. Why do I have this? Where did I get this? By Nicholas Christopher. I don't know. And I love that I don't know. I love that there are just surprise books in here that I do not remember buying. I don't remember why I bought it. I just did. I just have it. And here it is. And I'm going to read it at random. Another nice UK edition, Panther Science Fiction Time and Starts by Paul Anderson. With the damn sticker on it. I'm putting I need to rest my shoulder anyway, but while I sigh about people who put stickers on books. This is in one of those haul videos, too, we talked about. Murray Leinster doing the novelization for the TV series Land of the Giants. Wow. Right. I mean, come on. Yeah. Land of the Giants was awesome. And we talked about this, too, these destinies. It's a sci the science fiction magazine that's in paperback, mass market paperback form. You'll see these in depth in that anthology video. So go watch the anthology video for like the 99 million times I said it because this book is on it all swell. All swell? This is all swell on the video. Infinity 2. <laughs> I'm just... Do I need to slow down? And we can talk about this some more. But I, the books that were on this two-hour anthology haul video including this one tales from the bulgar unicorn um just go watch that video because i get into detail on these there and you'll want to because it's super entertaining and informative because that's what i do here at fantasy authors handbook i'm a provider of infotainment that last comment had a whiff of madness to it didn't it there's ron goulart again look at this guy yay Something Has Gone Terribly Wrong. Songs of Distant Earth by Arthur C. Clarke with the gold foil. The New York Times bestseller. And what's this here? It won't come out. It's stuck together. It's jammed in. It is Pro by Gordon R. Dixon. Oddball cover, right? It's like a kind of a soldier guy and then there's this farmer guy and then there's this like rocket ship thing. And fantastic. First to the stars. And these great older, smaller format ace books that I just love. Rex Gordon. What are the chances that's his real name? Ads Infinitum. A science fiction, a science fantasy novel by Tony Russell Wayman. All right. If you say so, cover is trippy. Is this set in 1992? Okay, <laughs> it's 1992. Oh no. Uh oh. Peter's dream 1992 dream house is not all it's cracked up to be. You know, it was tough in 1992, the housing market. Nerves by Lester Del Rey. <laughs> I love it. That's spectacular, right? The H bomb explosion. Nerves. 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 I get nervous about H-bombs. Are you nervous about H-bombs? I mean, what's not to be nervous about H-bombs? Jungle Fury. You're welcome. 
and Doris Pacheria, the Dimensioneers, because there are flying crocodiles, where do I get mine? The Impossible to Pronounce, The Twilight of Briarus by Richard Cooper. Daw, actually still yellow. Weird Lady, sure. This is one. Mm. There was some sticker problems. There was some sticker problems. There were some sticker problems. This book is beautiful. It's in gorgeous condition and it's ruined by the sticker problems. There are sticker problems. This is a collection of short stories set on Venus. I get upset about the stickers. The Rivet and Grandfather's Neck. Oh, excited about that one. Third from the Sun by Richard Matheson. Yeah, right? In that in the sort of that sort of looks like David Bowie, right? Sort of like drag David Bowie. Oops, kaboom. And I know this was on the one of those book haul videos, right? Henry James The Turn of the Screw and Daisy Miller. Proving yet again that this is not all science fiction and fantasy. There are other things in here, like another John D. McDonald book, All These Condemned. Nice. There's the man. Look at that. Looking like a 1970s gentleman. Um, this was one from the book haul videos where I got two and I kept this one, right? Robert A. Heinlein's Double Star. Kind of one of his classics, I believe. It's iffy condition-wise, but I don't care. You know, the, the spine lean, I, I don't like that. They are fixable. You can kind of squeeze them so that they don't do that anymore. But, mm, Jack Williamson from the box of Jack Williamson books. The giant bug of One Against the Legion. Super cool. It's just, I just love the books. I just love the art and the presentation and the titles and everything about everything like the Berserkers. Edited by Roger Elwood. Whoa. Spooky. <sighs> and speaking of those great, uh, or at least just really beautiful books from White Wolf from back in the day, Zod Wallop by William Browning Spencer. Lovely. Lovely. And this is it, right? This is the culprit right here. Clearance. I'm glad that I got this book for $1, but Zach Hughes, Mother Load, ruined because of this. I can get them off. Sometimes I can get these taken off correctly, but... And then, of course, there's another one on the back. Like, stop putting stickers on books. Stop putting stickers on books. Stop putting stickers on books with the purple sprayed edges because why not uh trouble on titan by alan e nurse cool right moon rover kind of thing on titan which is a moon it's not the moon but it's a moon it's dusty here i have dust every right and it's dusty starbright by damon castle very cool spaceships and on action going on laser beams shooting out all over the place and the sticker golly why all right okay fabulous it's all about the variety when phil's world it totally is Getting into the, like, guys fighting action here. The Grey Maiden. That's fun. 
right? Ooh, look, it's Alan Dean Foster. The interlopers, or just interlopers. Love Alan Dean Foster. I am an Alan Dean Foster fan, and you know because you've been following all my videos that I have been working my way slowly. I'm just a couple books in to the entire Pip and Flinks series that I'm going to be reading as I go along through my life because I just like Alan Dean Foster. And the first two books were really good. Um, this is another kind of classic thing that just sort of found its way in here, right? The Woman in the Dunes, Kobo Abe. And look, another John D. MacDonald. Death Trap. Outstanding. Again, hard-boiled kind of crime stuff. Um, just really, really super entertaining across the board. <laughs>